Hello, welcome to the Reflection Gallery. I'm Brooke Cummings. I'm a co-director of the Reflection Gallery. This is my co-director, um, Josh, and Victor and Kate. And first off, I'd like to thank everyone on staff for helping make this show possible. Josh, Kate, Margo, Tasha, Emily, Shayla, and Audrey. And today we have Thomas O, who is a professor of civil engineering at Michigan Tech and has been paying to since the 90s, and now he'll talk to his book. <laughs> this is my first time, so I'm really nervous. Uh, I'd like to welcome everybody, uh, and thank you for coming here. Uh, this is my first time exhibiting, and forgive me if I made blunders. Okay, But first of all, I'd like to make some acknowledgments. First to uh, Finlandia University for giving me the opportunity. Uh, Professor Yu Mei Chang for inviting me. Uh, and she, she's the one that really pushed me. Because I'm, I'm actually reticent in displaying my work, if people know me. You know. Uh, I also wanted to give special thanks to the, the gallery staff, uh, the directors, uh, Brooke and Josh, and the curator, Kate, and the others who helped uh, put up the paintings. Uh, also, I want to thank very much my, my wife and best friend, Faith. <laughs> she, she's definitely supportive of my activities. Uh, and also the support from my friends. Uh, some, uh, a lot of you are here, so I can't <laughs> list them all. <laughs> uh, oh, I put down the note here that I have to remind Myself and you, that the talk has to be short because I made a mistake with the planning here, and we have a flight at 2:30. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really embarrassed because uh, I, I didn't mean to just you know talk and leave. I said, no, I really want to stay. <laughs> when I show movies, you know that I, I really want the the discussion, right? So, uh, just my apologies there. So uh, I've decided, uh, I keep asking Yume what I could talk about, and she kept, she was not helpful, she said, whatever you want. <laughs> so I'll just start with my background. Uh, I was born in the Philippines, and my dad is Chinese and my mom is Filipino, okay? And I came to the U.S. in 81 for a PhD at UMass Amherst, and then I started teaching at Michigan Tech in 89. So that, that's when I arrived in town. Um, for my background in painting or drawing, I, I drew a lot when I was very young. Uh, I started drawing comic book superheroes <laughs> with, with just <laughs> pencils. And then um, going to Chinese school, I had to learn classical calligraphy from, uh, during all the way from primary to secondary level to all the way to, to high school. And I hated it <laughs> because of the way they cut it, uh, you know, in a very strict way, almost like with a stick, almost. You know. uh, it made it really uh, not a not a pleasant experience. But I did get fascinated on Chinese brush painting. I, I look back at my past, and I could trace it probably in one painting that I saw from a friend's brother using Chinese brush painting of Bruce Lee. And at that time, we were all Bruce, Bruce Lee fans. So I saw the, the shading and the layering, and it was very impressive. And I didn't know that Chinese brush and Sumi ink could be that, that great. But then I forgot about it. And uh, I tried watercolor during my youth, but not too successful. It always turned muddy, and the paper always crumpled and, and uh, undulated. Uh, I would like to. However, say that one when I moved here, I did get two very influential workshops. Uh, one, the one that uh, I could, the two that I could name is one from Clyde Mikla. I had a workshop at the Community Arts Center. The thing he taught me was not so much the technique but the philosophy. Uh, I could quote him here, and he says, "Wait until it dries." <laughs> And, and if you know Clyde, you know what that means. Uh, but it, I had a lot of discussions with him, and, and he influenced me a lot. And it, it got me started working with watercolor, and I enjoyed it. The other one was uh, with Joyce Koskenmaki when I went to the Artful Life 
uh, by Patri you know the one held by Patricia, and uh, we had some simple discussion. I don't think she might re remember any of it at all. But uh, one is <laughs> she said, uh, "Let the line flow," and she asked me also, "Why don't you let the line move all the way to the edge?" And I questioned myself why I didn't feel good about doing that. And I, I, from that point on, I kept on understanding that a line is not simply a line. It's, it's a feeling in some sense. Because to me, I don't want to go to the edge because it's, it's an admission of finiteness. <laughs> by, by not ending at the edge, I got, come closer to the idea of infinity. And then I started looking at Sumi painting, and I found that most of the painting actually do keep away from the edge. And they use the white space quite a bit because there's some other feeling that just not, not a, a line is no longer a line. And that's what I learned from that workshop quite a bit. And of course she said, always explore and observe. And, and I keep doing that. There are other influences. Uh, you know I'm a movie buff and uh, one that I would even recommend people who are at least patient or in the arts world La Belle Noisus is a four-hour, watching paint dry kind of movie. <laughs> but it is a bit for the artists in you, in any one of us. You could really see it come out. You know, it, that's one I highly recommend. Uh, the other ones are the Korean movie Chi Hwasun, a French movie Tous les Montagnes du Monde, Round Midnight, and the Chinese kung fu movie Hero where I actually had an enlightenment there because there was a character with a big brush that looks like a mop and inventing the words. And then I remembered and connected it with my high school experience and said, those Chinese teachers were full of it because at some point these guys were creating the words. They were the artists. And why can't I be like these guys with a mop rather than with the teachers that were actually being very strict? And after that, it was very freeing for me. Because I don't care about aesthetics anymore. I care more about you know trying to be like those guys with the mop, writing big words. Uh, there are also art exhibits that help me. I, I love contemporary art museum, and they influence me quite a bit. And some some of the uh, ideas here are kind of contemporary because of that. And I think most of you probably would like to have me explain a little bit about the exhibit. Uh, I use sumi. Uh, sumi is a Japanese word for uh, the particular uh, brush painting using ink and water and essentially just uh, white paper, uh, rice paper. But I, um, what I did is that I looked at it again with uh, with my experience with Joyce and Clive that uh, I use it simply as a base, as a starting point. So somebody was asking me earlier, how do you how do you paint? What process? It's very different from watercolor in the sense that you actually start the darkest in, for me because that becomes the base, and then you can do all the shading later on as you're forming your your philosophy and your your connection with the painting, as well as the mood. Uh, some of the subject matters, uh, it's all uh, mixed in right now, and I, I actually like it that way. <laughs> It turns out. I thought it would be better if I grouped it, but actually spread out is closer to what humanity really is. We are we have happy and sad, ugly, beauty, and everything mixed in. Uh, there's however I can tell you what basic groupings I had in mind before. I love jazz art, uh, jazz because they represent to me uh, a group of people, especially the bebop group. They were experimenting under uh, very difficult times. A lot of them were black musicians who were also experiencing discrimination. And yet, out of that, despite that, they were able to create a very emotional work and uh, a great piece of creative art. Okay, And so examples of that would be Bill Evans. Uh, oh, by the way, uh, feel free to get a copy of the list of paintings so that you can uh, investigate them in the web. Uh, that's one of the purpose I, I put it out because these guys are really geniuses to me. You can investigate their music and their, their history. Uh, Mingus, the one in the poster, is behind Phyllis. Miles, the trumpeter. I love uh, Thelonious Monk. He, he 
is to me epitome of uh, experimentalist and, and real jazz spirit. There's Art Blakey and Kenny Burrell. That's one group. The other group I, I wanted to paint about is uh, human activities uh, because it separates us, I think, from the animals. That we, you know, at least our arrogant ways, in our arrogant ways, we think we're better than animals. I don't want to say it's better, it's just different. So what makes us human? We, we, we try to make us ourselves human. We have dance, we have art in the, in the presence of Picasso, we have science in the presence of Max Planck, uh, and then we have the archer, which is sports, we have tango, we have, uh, we have and jazz uh, as another example of human activity. But there's also the dark side. Um, which bothers me since I started painting because 9-11 uh, occurred and if you could see this painting this is uh, my attempt at abstract uh, sumi is uh, post 9-11 what I tried to, to put there definitely is the white space there there's something missing right after 9-11 and the guy behind it is uh, losing his balance and everything around him is just chaos and uh, I don't Unfortunately, we, we haven't come that far from when I painted it. So it reminds me that, uh, you know, as a marker, I know what knew when I painted it, and I keep looking at it and say, have we gotten any better? Maybe slightly. <laughs> okay. But we have a far way to go to, to recover from 9-11. Um, there's a mother in Iraq, the one that's red. It looks like an A, but essentially it's a woman in Chador. Uh, holding a body, and uh, that's an image I have to exercise from my brain because I heard uh, when I was listening to This American Life, uh, somebody was describing a mother with half their child's body, and it just wouldn't leave my head. I had to paint it to, to just at least externalize it. And there are others, of course, Petsonovante is a term in Godfather for the big shot. Uh, and that's the one next to uh, here, the one in red. It's essentially my, my version of Al Pacino sitting there. Uh, he's, he's, he's continually oppressing people. Uh, so my, I could, you could replace it with whatever, politician, a man of power, whatever. And they're just there with their uh, rotting seat, and yet they hold their dignity as if it's very dignified. Uh, Guantanamo, I, I won't explain. Uh, and there's the warrior, and I did explain it to, to Brooke in my email. The warrior actually started when I wanted to do my own version of Picasso's, um, uh, Picasso's painting of... Uh, no, I forgot. Spanish yeah. Revolution? No. Don Quixote. Don Quixote. Don Quixote. Exactly. So Don Quixote. Now Don Quixote is supposed to be this very uh, uh, innocent and uh, very naive person. And I thought, what, what would hap What happened when he turned around? He's probably cynical now. And I turned from cynical Pica uh, Don Quixote to just generally, how about all the warriors? All the warriors must have gone with this hope of changing the world and come back and said, yeah, I made it worse. And you know, that's why it's full of blood in and, and there. And one of my latest one is uh, Cain and Abel, the, the horizontal one. Uh, it's my take on uh, maybe my answer back against the Zen uh, teaching of eternity when they draw a circle. And it's my take on it that it may be true that it's life, but sometimes that circle is quite bloody with Cain on top and Abel on the bottom, and sometimes it's the reverse. And yet there's a circle of war it never really ends. And I wanted it this wide because it's, to me, kind of cinematic in, in some sense. It has to be cinematic because it's kind of biblical. We haven't gone far from that kind of situation. Forgive me for being too, too detailed of this, but uh, I guess that's what uh, a lot of my paintings do touch on. To try and get me out of that depression a little bit <laughs> is the love and touch. There's Amaro, which is essentially French for lovers. Uh, there's the embrace, kiss, and uh, upper star. And then I also put in hope. Uh, there's Mahatma, Gandhi, 
in Gongsha, which is the uh, nickname of uh, Mother Teresa in her hometown. Uh, I googled it and it's meant uh, Rosebud, which to me again connects with Citizen Kane. Which <laughs> <laughs> is very, uh, very fortuitous. And then Ikiru is uh, the one on the edge. It's, it's about the man on a swing, and that's another movie I would recommend if you do want to watch a uh, meaningful movie. It's uh, translated to live. It's about a man dying of cancer and finally making something out of his life before he died. And the last scene in the movie is him on the swing. And again, that's an image that I keep in with me. Uh, and also party. It's a group of just dots and, and lines. It's about a party. It has morphed into many things. One is, it's, it's the joy I feel when we have our parties, those who come to our parties, you know how, how crowded it is and kind of fun at the same time. But lately it also has taken a little bit of different tone to me. Uh, it reminds me of the Egyptian people in their liberation center, that these are the youth. And the poem I put next to it is by, uh, oh, I forgot now, Can you, Mayor, uh, John Mayer. And the, the idea is they're always waiting for things to change. And uh, well, change is coming. So I'm glad, glad for them. And so I, I'd like to just conclude. I, I say that the, I, to me, the Sumi approach is a little different from watercolor. It did get, the base has a lot more prim primeval connection because it's just a brush. And the speed at which you're doing it can record a little bit of what you're feeling. Surprisingly, I, I didn't know that it would do that. But once the base is there, then you can do whatever you want. But at least the base is already there. And so I would recommend it as a uh, something that you can start your journey on. Uh, it's kind of like, you look, think of it as a uh, reverse Rorschach ink test. Okay. You're the one doing the Rorschach ink, and then now you figure out why did you, with your hand, and with your environment and whatever air you're breathing made you do that. Sometimes it's trash, and I do <laughs> just throw it away, but sometimes there's something there. And I'm surprised myself. Um, and so uh, lastly, of course, the, the white space is, is a color. I learned this starting with white, and I keep, uh, begin, uh, I keep on learning it. And to me, I guess the white is our life and we are the brush strokes. So uh, I will uh, just stop here and, uh, so that Faith doesn't get too nervous. <laughs> 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 uh, our flight is at 2.30, so we have to leave at 1.30. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you very much, and I, I guess I will entertain some questions. I have a question.